Um, uh, the next segment of our program is produced by our underwriter. Please welcome to the stage Ross Roz Brooks. Excuse me. She is the managing director of government, regulatory affairs, and public policy at Price Waterhouse Coopers. Good afternoon. As Patrick said, my name is Roz Brooks, and I lead PwC's public policy efforts in the U.S. I'm honored to be here with you today um, as much to benefit from the discussion on this timely topic as to introduce our U.S. Chairman and Senior Partner, Tim Ryan, who will be speaking with Fortune's Ellen McGirt in the next conversation to take place on the stage. At the risk of stating the obvious, I can tell you from personal experience that D.C. is still digesting the results of last week's elections. Um, a, an effort that started for me at 3 o'clock in the morning on November 9th and hasn't stopped yet. <laughs> so like the focus of this event, I've been spending my time researching, discussing, trying to analyze the policy implications of this election on business. Working with my PwC colleagues from across the globe and within our firm, we've been trying to bring kind of informed, insightful, and relevant perspectives to both our clients and the marketplace. And so with that, I would say that it hasn't left much time for personal reflection. Um, in fact, it, isn't, it hasn't left much time to think about what's been going on for my colleague in the office next to me as you think about the results of the election. And all that changed recently when I was reminded, encouraged, and even challenged to do just that when a note landed in my email box from Tim last Wednesday morning. In addition to asking our PwC colleagues to leverage our post-election resources to deliver value to our clients, the note also said, let me add one more request. This has been a long and hard fought campaign and a very emotional one for many. At a time when it's easy to focus on our differences, let's remember and act from our values, something we all share in common. Take care with each other, listen to each other, and be thoughtful about the discussions we have with our teams and our clients. Our world is complex and trust is at a premium. This means there is more opportunity for us to have an impact and grow as individuals and an organization. Together, we can make a difference with our clients, communities, and each other. The sentiments expressed in that note are just a few of the reasons why I am honored and proud to introduce you to PwC's U.S. Chairman and Senior Partner, Tim Ryan, who's going to discuss with Ellen McGirt. Hello. Hi, Ellen. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, thank you. It's great to be here with you. It's great to be here with everybody. We have That was an important tee-up, and mm -hmm. I want to get to some of those issues um, in a moment. Mm -hmm. But since we have you here, mm -hmm. and you're an invaluable resource, I thought we would go through some of the nuts and bolts mm -hmm. issues that sure. are top of mind at the moment. As President-elect Trump, mm -hmm. which is something I usually type, I don't usually say right. that out loud, <laughs> it's new for me, has... Um, is beginning his transition and his plans. Um, let's start with trade, mm -hmm. because I think that's one of the toughest ones to understand. And some of the protectionist rhetoric mm -hmm. across the entire campaign, both campaigns, were embraced in kind of a surprising way. What do you think that means, and what do you think is going to happen in trade going forward? Yep. I know the crystal ball time. No, that's fine. Thanks, Ellen. And uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Roz. So what I would say is, first of all, there's a lot to play out. And, and if, we have this privilege at PBC of hearing the views of hundreds of our clients. And as you can imagine, over the last week, there's a lot of interest in where do we go next as a country. And, and frankly, in many cases, a lot of excitement. I think, first of all, we need to see how it plays out. You'll have cabinet members, you'll have transition team members and positions filled. So we have to see that play, play out. There's no doubt trade is on the agenda. And some of the discussion during the election was that trade is not good. And as one of the previous speakers had talked about, there are two sides to trade. And one of the things that we worry a little bit about that got lost is the export, the benefit of exports, and the fact that it, it does benefit our workers to have sales outside the country, but also the fact that our consumers benefit from low, lower cost goods. So balance will be important, and my sense is that we'll get that as time plays out, but we'll have to see how that plays out. The other thing that's important that we're hearing from CEOs across the country is how does this growing protectionism play out? 
yeah. if they're doing business in other parts of the world. Right. And what does it mean to be a U.S. company doing business in China, doing business in India, doing business in South Africa, versus what does it mean to be a South African company and will you face a competitive disadvantage? So time will play out. But I will say this. Overall, we are optimistic at the end of the day. We, we're hearing optimism out there, and that's important to lay out. So let's move to um, another difficult thorny area, which is healthcare. Mm -hmm. Repeal and replace has become a mantra. We can all say it in our sleep. Right. What is the likelihood that that's going to happen, and what, how, how is that playing out for, um, how are your clients preparing for that eventuality? Right. So no doubt, a lot of discussion during the topic of the election process, a lot of discussions and de declarations. Our clients are eagerly awaiting to see what happens. So again, this little bit of wait and see, but start to think about it. We tend to think about repeal or keep, and it's likely that we'll see something in the middle at the end of the day. Because if you think about some of the things that President-elect Trump talked about is having more access to free markets, having consumers having more choices, those types of adjustments may be good. They may benefit consumers and may also benefit companies to provide better care for our people. Many of our clients are sitting there saying, let's wait and see, but they're coming to the realization that this all or nothing proposition may not be the likely scenario, but it may be adjustments, which may be good. What they're interested in is what data will they have available? Right. What level of transparency will be there? And then what do they need to do to also to meet the needs of whatever new law we get at the end of the day? So let's go to the first 100 days. Yeah. And this, I think, is um, there's so much uncertainty about what the priorities of the new administration is going to be. Um, new regulation, maybe there's uh, the repeal of Dodd-Frank coming down the pike. How are you, what do you hope will happen and what do you think will happen? Yep. So first thing is I hope our country continues to prosper and I think we will at the end of the day um, and that's an important point to point out. There's a lot of things you can do in the first 100 days. I think a couple of things that we'll likely see right out of the shoot is we will see a focus clearly on what do we do with tax reform, and that will be very important. We'll see a focus on Supreme Court appointments, and that will be important. We mentioned health care. I think we'll see that. Those three things will be very important in the first 100 days to see where you can get partisan agreement and then see where you can move the ball down the pike. Our clients are clearly very interested in tax reform to make ourselves collectively more competitive on the global stage, which will be increasingly important to help our economy continue to go in the right direction. So I've saved the thorniest for last. And I want to talk about race and diversity and inclusion, not only at the corporate level, but at the, at the human level. And um, I wanted to acknowledge your work in this regard. And I'm, I'm really in the position to know you're one of the few executives who are operating at your level who has really talked about race um, repeatedly and deeply with not only the people that work for you, who presumably are, you know, compelled to show up at a meeting, even if it's about an uncomfortable topic, but with your partners and with the communities at large. I thought you could talk a little bit about um, why, how that's played out, what you've learned, and what you think should happen next. Yeah, so maybe, thank you by the way, yeah, maybe a quick story. So I had taken over a senior partner of the U.S. firm on July 1st, and my, literally the first week, and I had a great plan by the way, I had a 100 day plan, and it was a really good plan. <laughs> um, and then four days into my tenure, we had the culmination of what happened happening in Dallas all week, and that was obviously we had Minneapolis and Louisiana beforehand. And I'll never forget the fifth day on the job that, that Friday, and we had the events in Dallas. And I sat down with my team and said, what do we do? Like, we had a new team. I put my team together. And we had all the discussions around, well, we have to be careful. It's balanced. It's a third rail. And ultimately, I decided to just reach out to our people. And I sent an email to all of our people. And there were hundreds and hundreds of replies that came in. And the replies were all different, but the common theme was that for a fairly progressive organization like ours, people had come to work and they couldn't talk about it. And one of the emails summed it up. It said, when I came to work on Friday morning, the silence was deafening. The silence was deafening. And that, that told me we needed to do something because we say we care about our people, and we do, and we care about all of our people. But work is where people spend the bulk of their time, and if you can't bring your whole self to work and talk about what's on your mind, then we'll never be able to serve our clients and each other and the communities as well as we can. And that's what causes us to take a really big step and really jump into this. So what's next for people who want to do diversity and inclusion work? And I, I write a daily column about race and leadership, and I can tell you from my point of view, my audience is um, afraid. Right. They're hearing really mixed signals politely, that, putting that politely, right. mixed signals about how this administration is going to talk about people. Right. They're from, from immigrants and, and race and women. 
how, what is, what is the, how do you see the landscape playing out and what advice are you giving to other CEOs? So funny thing is literally yesterday I was on the phone with seven or eight large companies, their CEOs and other, other folks in the companies and we talked about this issue. And there's no doubt this was a hard fought election and I think as senior leaders, we need to first of all acknowledge that and, and be comfortable talking about that knowing our companies, our organizations could be very similar to the country half in one camp, half in another camp, and acknowledge that this isn't about celebrating or mourning a victory or a loss, this is about our people, and this is about core values. And most companies have core values around caring and around our people, and most companies have been focused on diversity. This is a time more than ever to tell our folks it's time to double down. And that's what we've done at PwC, and that's what I see leading companies doing. And by the way, in an economy like ours where talent is the major driver, where that's how we ultimately will compete and win or lose, that's really important. So this is a time to acknowledge how hard the election was, not make it about celebrating or, or mourning, but say this is the time to double down on diversity, and that's what we're doing. Even when things get difficult. Absolutely. I mean, because again, that's what's on our people's minds. And we can't be a people-driven organization serving clients and communities if we're not willing to hit the hard topics because, like you said, it's on people's minds. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's You're all welcome. the time we have. Thank you, Thank everybody. You.